Bullet Train is bloody brilliant, both visually with its neon-clad Japanese setting and in terms of the plot, which mixes gory action with a fun murder mystery that slowly unfolds. However, it has been getting quite a mixed bag of reviews, with people either loving it or hating it, and I can understand why. But before I get further into it, please consider subscribing and switching on notifications as it really helps us out, and if you are feeling particularly generous, give us a like as well, as that tells YouTube that this video is worth showing to others. This film follows several assassins as they happen to board the same bullet train that goes from Tokyo to Kyoto, and during the journey we find out that they are closer linked to one another than first anticipated. It's a simple premise, but it creates some wonderful opportunities for some playful storytelling that moves between characters and drip-feeds information before a final satisfying reveal. A lot of critics have name-dropped other directors such as Guy Ritchie and Quentin Tarantino as inspirations in terms of style and storytelling techniques for Bullet Train, but in terms of how this film does not match up to the quality of those directors' work. I feel like this is a very harsh lens to look at this film through, as though the inspirations are quite obvious, I can't say that it's a carbon copy of another film. Yes, its structure is Pulp Fiction-esque, following different characters at different times and revealing information through flash-forwards and flashbacks. And yes, the banter in the dialogue reminds me of Guy Ritchie, especially given Lemon and Tangerine's British origins. And yes, you could say that a whodunit murder mystery set in one location is 100% Agatha Christie via Kenneth Branagh. But why is that a problem? It's already well known that no story is truly original, and every filmmaker seeks to tell their unoriginal story in a unique way so as to shed light on aspects of that story from a different and exciting perspective. Of course, I am oversimplifying, but hopefully you get my point. David Leitch's hard work should not be discredited because it reminds people of other films. Indeed, the inspirations I have cited are a good indicator of whether or not you'll like this film. Don't expect Murder on the Shinkansen or Snowpiercer on LSD, as the comedy alleviates much of the tension, but that doesn't make it any less of an entertaining film. What I think Leech excels at is presenting his stories super beautifully, not just in terms of visuals, but also in terms of the action, which he has fun with, especially the fight choreography, and we can see this in his previous body of work, from John Wick to Deadpool 2 and Atomic Blonde. All of these films, including Bullet Train, have much of the same core crew. Director of photography Jonathan Saylor, editor Elizabeth Ronnerstorter, and even production designer David Scheunemann, who designed every film except John Wick. Leach has a clear house style that he's drawn to, and it's cohesive across his portfolio of work, from the set, the lights, and the types of shots he uses, to the action sequences and the way these creative fights are cut together. Speaking of which, in an interview with Variety, lead actor Brad Pitt discusses how he and David Leitch are both big fans of Jackie Chan and the way he crafts action, especially in terms of how he uses props to create some iconic moves. He continues on to say that going in this direction was very appealing to him as this was not a type of film that he had done before. The biggest difference between Leech's previous work and Bullet Train is that this film features an ensemble of main characters rather than a clear singular protagonist, which feels like a logical step up in terms of a directing challenge for Leech. However, I can admit that the characters varied in terms of emotional complexity. On the one hand, we have the father and elder, who are given generations-old motivations for their actions, which mirror plot points relating to Prince and White's death. On the other hand, we have Lemon and especially Tangerine, who are not explored far under their surface. Lemon's love of Thomas and Friends is really his only character trait, which is taken directly from the book that the film is based on. 
but I felt like it was so beautifully interwoven with the story that I wasn't really looking for more from his character. Brad Pitt's character Ladybug is also from the book, and I loved the way that his apparent bad luck fuels much of the action. At times, it did feel like his laid-back attitude and newfound focus on self-improvement are his only two character traits. However, giving these particular character traits to a seasoned assassin makes him a far more complex character than just being the face of surface-level satire about the self-help industry, though that particular layer of his character was delivered pretty effectively, in my opinion. His profession is one where accidents are undesirable or meticulously planned, and he's the type of character that is incredibly good at his job without meaning to be, a type of person that we either are or have met. He also spends half of the film on the phone to his handler, who acts as a sort of therapist. My point is that when you dig into the details of Ladybug as a character, there's quite a lot of fascinating things to unpack. A complaint I've read is that the writing felt lazy, with critics citing the example of Ladybug's line, he follows me around like something witty. But this line felt genuinely human to me. How many times have you been midway through a sentence and then just forgotten where you were going with it? It didn't feel like this was a lazy line, but instead a line that is purposefully imperfect. The film has also been criticised for whitewashing, casting white characters in roles that were not originally white in the source material, a novel called Maria Beetle by Japanese novelist Kotaro Isaka. However, in an interview with the New York Times, Isaka said that his characters are ethnically malleable, and that he considers the action sequences more important to his story than its Japanese setting. It's certainly a difficult situation, as Sony definitely want to sell their film as a Hollywood blockbuster, and having Brad Pitt in the lead role is a great way to do that. I also think he does a great job in the role. Recently, famous Japanese actor Ken Watanabe defended his film The Last Samurai after it faced similar criticisms, because of how impactful it was in increasing opportunities for Asian American actors. Hopefully, Bullet Train can have a similar effect, at least in increasing the exposure of Isaka's novels to the Western market. Overall, Bullet Train is a colourful, fun, and well-choreographed film that delivers on its promise of action and comedy. It playfully brings to life Kotaro Isaka's novel, with a fantastic cast led by Brad Pitt in one of his most enjoyable roles yet. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe and switch on notifications so you don't miss future videos, and comment below with your thoughts on Bullet Train. Do you agree with the criticisms of this film? For more film content, feel free to follow us on Twitter, Letterboxd, and TikTok. Links in the description. Otherwise, this has been Tea Break Film Reviews. My name's Michelle, and I hope you have a great day.